Hello, hello, welcome, welcome everyone. How is everyone doing this week? We want to welcome you all to week five of our YT Advanced course for um, coders. And can you believe we're already halfway through with this course? I cannot believe it. Um, I guess time flies when you're having fun. I hope you all have been following along while we've um, been progressing week to week through the different sections. This week we will be covering the digestive system. So hope you're ready and go ahead and type in the chat let us know how you're doing so far this week hopefully everybody's having a wonderful week and let's go ahead and get started and we announced last week that we will be um, having you know throughout this course we will be uh, selecting some winners uh, we uh, to enter into a drawing um, for a lecture series. And we announced one of our winners last week. We will be announcing another winner at the end of next week's class. So next week will be week six. The end of the um, class next week, we will be announcing another winner. So stay tuned for that and make sure that you are entering in this drawing to win a lecture series. And if you are wondering um, if you can find out more information about AMCI or you need a little bit more, um, you know, to kind of supplement your studies, we would like to invite you to join or to uh, um, visit our website, www.amcicoding.com. Click on Courses, the tab up there that says Courses. A drop-down menu will come up here and you will have, um, what? one two three four the fifth one down there the lecture and fast track course you can sign up for that there and that what that gives you is access to our lectures to amci's lectures and you can study on the go so you can have this right on your device listen to us at any time um depending on which course you get into um the fast track of course um, offers a little bit more you have some quizzes you um, on both you have your private lectures they're both mobile device friendly with your fast track course you actually will receive a certificate of completion these are monthly subscriptions so please join our website if you're interested or you can contact our customer service department and they will gladly um, give you some more information if you are interested in this all right, everybody, I want to introduce you to our wonderful team. I'm Mrs. Tracy. I am the instructional director, team director here at AMCI. And I also want to introduce you to Miss Rochelle today. She is our partnership and marketing director here at AMCI. Hi, Miss Rochelle. How are you doing today? Hello, Miss Tracy. I am doing great. How are you? And how are you coders? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Miss Tracy. <laughs> Ask you a question. No, that's okay. I took a little bit to respond. Um, I'm doing great today, Miss Rochelle. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, me too. Thank you, Miss Tracy. And coders, how are you doing? Welcome to week five. I know it's so surprising. I think we we're just having too much fun being with you on Wednesday nights and um 
we just want to keep doing this. And um, tonight, uh, today, actually, we have a great, great chapters to cover. And I know you coders are going to enjoy this class. So let's do it. Let's get started, Ms. Tracy. Thank you so much for the introduction. Thank you so much, Ms. Rochelle. And I think I can speak for all of us when I say digestive is one of our favorite, I don't know why, but we always have fun doing digestive in our classes and stuff. So it's a, it's a pretty, um, I don't know, we like the chapter. So anyways, I want to introduce uh, Mrs. J. Mrs. J is our curriculum director here at AMCI. She is phenomenal, as you all know, if you've been following us week to week. Hi, Mrs. J, how are you today? Hello, how are you, Mrs. Tracy? Doing great, Mrs. J. Thank you for asking. Awesome. I am doing well, well. I It is a beautiful day here in NC. And coders, are you ready? Well, I am. All right, Mrs. Tracy, take it away. All right. Okay, and... If you want to win an AMCI lecture series, um, go ahead. We, there will be a link here in the chat. Go ahead and click on that. And um, all you have to do is comment on the video below and tell us what you learned in today's presentation and sign up on the link provided in our live chat after this lecture. And like I said, we will announce the winner at the end of week six, which is next Wednesday. Okay, so good luck, everyone. All right. Good luck, everyone. Okay. I think it's my turn. Yes, it oh, is. And I'm trying to hand it on over. There you go. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Mrs. Tracy. Coders, I know Mrs. Tracy asked you to go ahead and type in the chat, but I need you to type in the chat too. I want to know something. I want to know how confident are you with digestive CPT guidelines? Write in that chat. If you're very confident, write very confident. If you're somewhat confident, write sub somewhat confident. If you're barely confident, write barely. Or if you're some other kind of confident or not confident at all, let us know. It will help us present to you today. All right. so. While you're typing, I'm going to go over the class rules. This is an advanced course. That means the pace will be accelerated. And if you are currently in a comprehensive course, this may be for you. If you're new to coding, this is definitely not for you because again, it's advanced. There will be playbacks after this, um, presentation, it will go into playback. It'll be a, a lecture on YouTube or a video on YouTube. So you can watch it at any time. And homework, we have homework. It will be available for 24 hours in the comments section. All right, so 24 hours after this presentation, you'll see that homework. Don't forget, the student should already have some experience with CPT guidelines and class will move at a faster pace than usual. Now, what are our goals for today? Goal number one, we're gonna review guidelines for digestive system coding. That is the digestive section of your CPT manual. Number two, Provide scenarios to further clarify the more complex coding guidelines. Goal number three, provide CPT documentation tips or CHUN tips. And four, demonstrate the importance of forensic reading. And remember coders, class will move at a faster pace than usual. Course outline, week one. Now, Keep in mind, we're in our fourth week, or no, we're in our fifth week, what? All right, so week one, we reviewed integumentary system. Week two, musculoskeletal. Week three, respiratory. Week four, cardiovascular. Week five, that's this week, we will review digestive system coding. Week six, urinary male, female. Week seven, nervous eye, ear. Week eight, radiology, anesthesia, week nine, pathology, week 10, medicine. So we have a, 
extensive curriculum for you. And unfortunately, we will not cover the following evaluation and management and ICD-10 CM or PCS coding because those two topics are very extensive and we just don't have enough time. Don't forget coders, class will move at a faster pace than usual. I know that I asked you to type your answers to my question in the chat, but keep in mind coders, the instructor speaking, and that is me, anytime you someone speaking, we cannot see your questions. However, there are several AMCI instructors who are not speaking and they're standing by to answer your questions. So when I am finished speaking, I'll go in the chat and if you have a question for me, I'll be there to answer it. And most of the AMCI instructors can be identified with the name. Some of them have AMCI instructors by their name and there's a little instructor icon next to it. Or if you're somebody like Miss Abby, who does her own thing, just look for Miss Abby. She's also an AMCI instructor. So without further ado, I want to read to you the copyright. CPT is copyright of American Medical Association. All rights are reserved. CPC is a registered trademark of the AAPC and AAPC content found within this presentation is copyright of AAPC. And don't forget keyword concept, FTR, Chun, AMCI, FEB7, Flip Tap, are all trademarks of AMCI. And we're really proud of that. All right, coders, we have to do what we always do when we start these classes. We review some of the general coding guidelines. And the general coding guidelines, as it pertains to coding surgical procedures, you must remember that every single CPT code for surgery in the surgical section Oh, my, my um, screen just wants to do whatever it wants to do. All right, team, so if someone can just unclick the animations or the slideshow, that would be great. All right, I'm gonna try and pause it. Yeah, I'm gonna pause. All right, so we've got the CPT surgical package, which means that every single procedure code in the surgery section has have other items in addition to the surgery bundled into it. There are six additional things that are already included in that surgical code. The ENM service. So if you know what ENM is, that's the visit, the day before surgery and the day of surgery. That's bundled in that surgery code. So it means you don't code it additionally, unless there's some extenuating circumstance. And if that's the case, you'll need a modifier. Any type of topical or local anesthesia, that's bundled into the surgery code. The immediate post-operative care, including dictating operative notes and talking with the family, all of that is bundled in that surgery code. Writing of orders bundled in the surgery code. Evaluating the patient in post-anesthesia recovery area, that's bundled. And finally, your um, typical post-operative follow-up care or follow-up days whenever they're, or visits. That's all bundled in that surgery code. Another key um, general surgery guideline is separate procedure. Coders, this is gold. Knowing this guideline and mastering it will prove extremely beneficial to you. So let me review it very carefully or quickly and carefully. Number one, a separate procedure should often be coded by itself. However, it can be coded with another procedure as long as that separate procedure is not related to another more extensive procedure. Now you will know it's a separate procedure because next to the procedure, next to the code language, Next to the code, the language, well, it's really right next to the code language, and it's in parentheses, you'll see the word separate procedure. 
all right? So you know it's a separate procedure and it can be coded with another procedure as long as it's not related to that procedure and it's a more extensive related procedure. You do not code it. You bundle it if it's related. Now, if it's not related, then you just use modifier 59 and go ahead and code it. I hope, you know, I kind of went around the, the bush on that, but just remember when you see separate procedure, it's coded by itself. And the only time you can code it with another procedure is if it's not related. And if it's not related, make sure you append modifier 59. All right, so since we're on the issue or the topic of guidelines, let's review guidelines. Now this, knowing this coder, knowing these this rule or these rules is gonna put you in a good place today, I promise. All right, so you've got three types of guidelines. The first are parenthetical guidelines. These are guidelines within the parentheses. All right, they have the highest level of priority. They outrank all other guidelines. The second level are your code series or your chapter guidelines. You will see these denoted by well, they're typically before your code series and underneath the blue bold, blue heading. And third, you have your general coding guidelines like we've just reviewed. They're on the green sheet. These are general coding guidelines and they are the lowest ranking, but they are a guideline. However, if no guideline, trust your keywords, they rule, but you can use your keywords and guidelines, but your guidelines will always take precedence over your keywords. And what is keywords? That's keyword concept. All right, so now, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the digestive system. So let's start with the table of contents. The table of contents for the digestive system is arranged anatomically from superior to inferior. So if you know the digestive the the digestive process or the anatomy of the digestive system, this is exactly how the codes go. So if you look at the top, you're going to start with the lips because that is the beginning of the digestive process. Then you'll see the mouth in those codes and procedures, the tongue and the floor of the mouth, denta, dento alveolar structures, palate and uvula, salivary gland and ducts, pharynx, adenoids, and tonsils, followed by esophagus, stomach, intestines, Meckel's diverticulum and the mesentery, appendix, colon and rectum, and anus, and your um, accessory organs, such as your liver and your biliary tract. And there you go, that is your table of contents. So I did say that it's really important that you know the digestive process. So let's quickly review. Yeah, we got a few moments. The digestive system pretty much is responsible for the ingestion, that's consuming, consumption, um, the incest, in oh goodness, ingestion, digestion, and assimilation of food or elimination of the residual digestive waste products. So it starts in the mouth and goes down through the esophagus and you're gonna bypass your accessory organs like your liver and your gallbladder. Then you've got your stomach, your small intestines, large intestines, rectum and colon. And when you learn this process, the digestive process, coding in this section can be very helpful. It can. Now, another thing, so now that we've reviewed the digestive process, let's talk about annotating and chun in this section. Well, pretty much 
the digestive system codes for a lot of scopes. And if you look at the screen, I know it's not the best view. This is an example of a scope, scopic procedures, a family of scopes. And if we follow the rules of Chun, which you highlight behind the semicolon and highlight all of your parenthetical guidelines, if we follow that, your page will look like this. So you're going to have to use your discretion, coders. Now, you know, if you see something like this, if your pages are looking like this, it's not effective. You pretty much will get nothing from the image on the left. You got to make things work for you. So let's take a look at what I've done on the right. And it just pretty much, um, you know, it's a modified version of Chun. When you have multiple um, scopes, multiple families of scopes, it may help if you just highlight your parenthetical guidelines and maybe leave the indented portions or the 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 um, indented code or the or the the dependent code. Leave it blank. So let's just go ahead and highlight our parenthetical guidelines because that's so important. And let's leave the indented blank. And see, this is a little better. You can kind of see, but if you want to do one thing more, just go ahead and write out your keyword. Write your keyword next to the code and boom, 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 boom. And what you have here, what you've just done, you've given yourself an advantage when you're taking the exam. If you have a scenario, somebody has a, um, um, a biopsy and the, patient, the physician used snare technique, at a glance, you can see 43251 will be your code. If the procedure is a hot bi biopsy forceps, there you go, there's your code. If guide wire was used, there's your code. So this might be something you may want to employ throughout your manual, putting those keywords on the outside so you can grab it. That's a good thing, but it's extremely useful whenever you are coding um, in coding sco scopes or scopic procedures. All right, so since we're on the topic of scopes, let's talk about scopes that are commonly found in the digestive system coding section of your CPT manual. Um, they're a huge part of um, digestive system coding and Chun will help you. But the thing that you should know when coding, you need to know the difference between types of scopes. Scopes can be entered the body three ways. <laughs> yeah, three ways when they're digestive system scope, three ways. You've got scopes that go through your mouth and nose or nose or scopes that go through the rectum. So if you've got upper scopes, we call those rooters. If they are lower scopes, they go through the bottom. Those are tutors. So are you coding for a rooter or are you coding for a tutor? And then when you understand that, then you can get move on to the next level and determine the type of scopes used. Now, I love the CPT principles of CPT manual because they give you this nice little um, chart listing the types of scopes that you code for. Now, when you are coding, you need to know scopes, but most important, you need to know the anatomy being scoped. That is what you code for. All right, so the codes are, are pertain to the areas viewed, not the scope used. But you do need to know the names of the scopes and the areas that they're using. So 
if you ha have a esophagoscopy, you know that that is a scope of the esophagus. If you have an esophagogastroduodenoscopy, that's an EGD, you know that's a scope of the esophagus, the stomach, and the duodenum or the duodenum, whichever you prefer. If you have a it's endoscopic retrograde, retrograde coliangiopancreatography, sorry about that, in ERCP. These are liver and bile ducts, gallbladder and the pancreas. Enteroscopy, that's the small intestines. Ileoscopy is a scope of the ileum through an ileostomy. Yeah, that's a hole. Col colonoscopy through a stoma. That's a, a, a <laughs> that's viewing the colon through an ostomy through that that hole. Proctosigmoidoscopy. That's the rectum and the lower part of the colon. Sigmoidoscopy is the sigmoid colon. Colonoscopy are your large intestines. And the ana anoscopy, well, that's the anus and the rectum. So it's really important that you know the areas that are being viewed and the scopes that are traditionally used to view those areas. Because remember, we're coding for the area scoped, not the scope. I know. I know. All right, so you got to pay attention to where the scope was inserted and the furthest area viewed through that scope. Scope. All right, so I got some, um, I think I have some FTRs that I want to, I'm calling them FTRs because at AMCI we call them FTRs, but they're actually guidelines. So if I slip up and say FTRs, I'm saying facts to remember. When you code for scopes in the digestive system, you need to know what type of scope it is. That's number one. What type of scope? Is it a rooter scope or a tutor scope? Meaning, how did that scope enter the body? You need to remember that diagnostic scopes are bundled in the same surgical scope. Meaning, if a diagnostic scope turns into a surgical scope, then you're not going to code that diagnostic scope. And I think at this level, you should know what that is. If you don't know what it is, type it in the chat. One of the instructors will explain to you what a diagnostic scope is versus a surgical scope. Diagnostic scopes turn into a surgical scope. We'll explain it to you in the chat. Now, if this um, procedure is if a diagnostic scope is performed with an open procedure, let's say it turns into an open procedure, then you will code both. You're gonna code both of them separate. You're gonna code the diagnostic, you're gonna code the open procedure. Now, when you're coding for colonoscopies, you use modifier 53 if the doctor has to discontinue a diagnostic scope procedure. Use modifier 52 if the doctor has to discontinue a therapeutic procedure. Here's another guideline. Watch Medicare um, colonoscopies because you have to use a HCPCS level two code. And again, remember, code the anatomy viewed, not the scope. And make sure you code the furthest scope needed. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna say that again. Yeah, I'm gonna say it again. So get your paper and pencil out. Guideline number one, is it a rooter or a tutor? Guideline number two, diagnostic scopes are bundled in the same surgical scope. But, um, guideline number three, the, if the diagnostic scope becomes an open procedure, both are coded. Both the diagnostic and the open are coded. Guideline number four, use modifier 53 if the doctor has to discontinue a diagnostic scope procedure. 
guideline number five, use modifier 52 if the doctor has to discontinue a colonosc a therapeutic colonoscopy. And you know, when I'm saying 53 and 52, I'm talking about colonoscopies. Guideline number six, watch Medicare hick picks colonoscopies. Guideline seven, code the anatomy viewed, not the scope. Guideline number eight, code the furthest scope needed. All right, so now that you have the guidelines, let's go ahead and let's do some scenarios. All right, here are my answers. A, 46606. B, 4660106, 6990. C, 4660706, 6990. And D, 4660707. Previously treated for an anal fissure, comes in today complaining of painful bowel movements and also states he's been having quite a bit of rectal bleeding for the past week. Dr. Poe performs a diagnostic anoscopy and notices some abnormal tissue growth. Using a chemical agent and an operating microscope, Dr. Poe takes multiple biopsies. What CPT codes is or are reported? Okay, coders, I'm going to give you one minute and a half. Okay, my apologies for making that mistake. So hopefully you didn't see that answer. Your eyes were on your books. So I'm going to try it again. Minute and a half starts now. Okay, coders, 
Thank you so much for your patience. And if you didn't see the answer, you may or may not have gotten it correct. If you saw it, you got it correct. And you know that the answer is D. All right, so how did we arrive at this answer? All right, our keywords, 52-year-old, previously treated for anal fissures, and then rectal bleeding. Sorry, we missed the anal fissure. Rectal bleeding, diagnostic anoscopy, chemical agent, operating microscope, multiple biopsies. All right, those are our keywords. And we know that we are coding maybe or maybe not coding a diagnostic an anoscopy. Um, but is that always the case? Well, we know that 46600, this is the code for anoscopy, right? But if we look at this guideline up here, it says surgical endoscopy always includes diagnostic endoscopy. All right, so a general scope scopic term is endoscopy. So all of the scopes fall under that um, definition. So an anoscopy is a type of endoscopy, just so you know, so this guideline does apply. So if we have an anoscopy, which is did happen, it is not a diagnostic scope. And the reason it's not a diagnostic scope is because something happened in that scope. The doctor performed a surgical procedure within that scope. Therefore, it's no longer a diagnostic scope. It is now a surgical scope. So that's what we mean when a surgical scope, when a diagnostic scope is bundled into the surgical scope. All right, so our our um, parenthetical guideline below the family 46600, it tells you do not report 46601 in conjunction with 69990. So we have a couple of things going on. A is not just only coding 46601 with 6990, it's also coding a diagnostic scope and a, and a surgical scope. See, 46600 is your diagnostic scope. 4661 is your surgical scope. So that's wrong on two levels. So we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of A. Next, we've got 46606. This is the code for anoscopy with biopsy single or multiple. But you know what, that sounds like it could be correct, but it's not. And the reason why it's not correct is because you have a better code. Yeah, if you look at 46607, this is an anoscopy with high resolution magnif magnification. Example, a colonoscope, operating microscope. So this code is a much better and a much more comprehensive and tells what happened. 46606 is just saying this is an anoscope and biopsies were done. But if you look at our language, it says that a chemical agent was used and an operating microscope. And 46607, it says this operating microscope and chemical agent enhancement with biopsy, single or multiple. To be honest, coders, the key words are driving you to the answer. 46607 has the majority of the key words, and that's why it is going to be correct. So we know that multiple biopsies took place, and we also know that we've got a parenthetical guideline that says for high resolution and anoscopy with biopsy, use 46607. It's straight up telling you that 46606 is incorrect. 
So we've got C and D. And we've already established that 46607 is correct. But see these little light green boxes? These are all keywords, all keywords. And all of these keywords can be found in 46607. So we know that's correct. However, see that parenthetical guideline? It says, do not report 46607 in conjunction with 69990. Look at C. That's exactly what C is doing. And we know that C is incorrect. And our answer is D. All right, coders, how did you do? Did you get it correct? If you did, outstanding. If you learned something, well, you know what, coders? That is priceless. All right, coders, I do have one more scenario, but I want to make sure that it's lining up right. I don't want us to have any more, um, and we were about to, any more um, technical problems. It's fixed. All right, so I think you're ready for this one. And I want to let you know that this is a um, this is a, going to be a teachable moment. This is a little more complex than, than the last one. Just want to prepare you for that. So let's put your thinking caps on. And you can see my screen now. And here are the answers. A, 46600-99244 with a 25 modifier. B, 46612. 99244 with a 25 modifier. C, 453089244 with a 25 modifier. And D, 453084660 with a 59 modifier. And 99244 with a 25 modifier. A male patient with a history of lower perineal pain arrives to the gastroenterologist's office for consultation at the request of his PCP. After a comprehensive history and examine, exam with low medical decision making, the physician determines that he needs to scope the patient to further explore the problem. Patient is placed in jackknife position. The physician inserts an anoscope into the rectum to view the anal canal and determines that the patient has a polyp distal of the anal canal. To better access the polyp, the physician removes the anoscope and inserts a proctoscope to remove the polyp by hot biopsy forceps. After the procedure, the physician reports his findings back to the patient's PCP and documents in the patient's chart. What are the correct procedure codes for this encounter? All right, coders, you have a minute and a half.
All right, coders, how did you do? If you said C, outstanding. And if you said something else, well, let's hope that this is a teachable moment and that is priceless. Okay, here are the key words. Jack knife position, anoscope, rectum, anal canal, polyp, distal, anal canal. Removes the anoscope, inserts a proctoscope to remove the polyp by hot biopsy forceps. All right, these are the key words. So let's look carefully at our codes. All right, so we know that an anoscope was inserted into the rectum. So 46600, anoscopy, diagnostic. Hey, that could be correct. It could be, right? Because we did have a diagnostic anoscopy and we know that when the doctor removes one scope and inserts another scope, that diagnostic scope is that's bundled in surgical scope does not apply. It is not the same scope because they used a different scope. So, hey, I like this 46600, but let's also see what happens. This doctor inserted a proctoscope. So yeah, we are gonna code both of, both of the scopes. And then through that proctoscope, the physician removed the polyp. Okay, so we know how this is going. And this polyp was removed by hot biopsy forceps. All right, so I'm looking at these codes, 45300, this is correct. Yes, a proctosigmoidoscopy took place and so did this anoscopy. And 45308 is the surgery that was done in the proctoscope with removal of a single polyp or other lesion by hot biopsy forceps. All right, so this, this is looking great. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Look at 46600. This is the code. It's a diagnostic scope, but it's also a separate procedure. All right, coders, what do we do when there is a separate procedure? Well, if it's related, to a more extensive procedure, then you know what? We don't code it. <laughs> All right, so typically we code it, but if it's related to a more extensive procedure, we don't code it, it gets bundled. And how do we know it's related? Well, one way we know is it's in the same body area. And specifically, the doctor used an anoscope first, inserted into the rectum, then couldn't do the job and used another scope, a scope that saw further, that practice scope. So these are definitely related, these scopes, and this procedure is. So let's go ahead and let's solve our scenario. If you look at A46600, we know that's incorrect because it's not even coding for the proctosigmoidoscopy. B is wrong, 46612, because it's not coding also for the proctosigmoidoscopy, okay? It's not coding for that. But if you look at D, that's incorrect. We just marked it incorrect. Let me go back and tell you why it's incorrect. Because of this separate procedure, 46600 is related to 45308 separate procedure, is going to take precedence because not only is this a general coding guideline, it is a parenthetical guideline which has the highest level of um, priority, meaning that the parenthetical guidelines will supersede all guidelines and therefore we are not going to code this separate procedure with this um, proctosigmoidoscopy. So D, is incorrect, and C is our answer. How you doing, coders? How you doing? So if you got that correct, outstanding, 
if you learn something that is priceless. All right, Coder, so we talked about this anoscope and we talked about a proctoscope. Um, I want to give you a little view. I, got, I found these little images. I want you to kind of see the difference between the two. And I also want you to take away from this um, scenario that typically when the doctor removes the diagnostic scope, then reinserts another scope for a surgical procedure, you can code the diagnostic scope separately, typically. However, if you see that separate procedure, that's going to trump all and it cannot be related because if it is related, you bundle it. All right. Now let's look at our chart again. Remember we code for the areas viewed, not the scope. And look at this anoscope down below. Got some images. We In our previous scenario, we were coding for an anoscope and we also coded for a proctoscope. And one is just three centimeters larger. And you have to pay attention to not only the scope, but how far it viewed within that scope. So we're going to code for the proctoscope. And they are related. Yeah. Okay. So I have one more quickie. Well, it's not quick, but I have one more scenario for you. Hang tight. I want to make sure that I have my... I don't want to have any more malfunctions. Yeah, I was getting ready to, so let me fix this. All right, coders, I have a case example for you. An esophagogastroduodenoscopy, or EGD, with dilation of gastric obstruction and an EGD with biopsy are performed. What codes should be reported? All right, coders, I'm going to give you a minute and a half, and you see this is not a multiple choice scenario. Okay, I gave you an extra second or two. The answer, what is the answer? The answer is 43245 and 43239 with a 59 modifier. And really how I got my answer, I looked it up in the index. Yeah, and then the index took me here. You've got at the parent code level, 43235, that's the parent code, esophagogastroduodenoscopy, and 43245 with dilation of gastric duodenal strictures, example, balloon or bougie, 
and there it is, dilation of gastric obstruction. So we know that's the first code. And then we have to code for the biopsies, 43239 with biopsy single or multiple. And we know that we code it. And it says, you know, you read your parenthetical guideline, don't report 43254 in the same lesion. All right, let's make sure that we're not coding 43245. And we're not. Okay, so we can code both 43245 and 43239. Uh oh, let me go back. And I want you to just kind of take a look. If you got this correct, outstanding. If you learned something, that is priceless. Outstanding job, coders. Now, before I hand it over to Ms. Rochelle, I'd like to remind you if you like this instruction, please like this video. Go to the don't in the chat right below the where you see this this presentation there's a like button click click on it like it and don't forget to tell everyone about these lectures because the more people watch the more videos we can make yeah so we need your help so take everyone let everyone know okay now Without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Ms. Rochelle. Thank you so much, Mrs. J. And what a great discussion on that scopes. I learned a lot of things in there, actually. And I love those scenarios. Isn't that a little bit challenging? But always good when you have challenging questions because that's when you actually learn. So thank you, Ms. Tr uh, Mrs. J, for a wonderful discussion again. And just to follow up with what Mrs. J said, yes, please do like, subscribe, and share our video if you like this. If you're learning a lot from this um, class, then it would make sense to share it to your friends, people who are interested with medical coding. So if you're wondering how to do that, well, once you see this video in our YouTube channel, you should be able to see that thumbs up button over there. <laughs> Just click on it, make sure it's blue. That means that you like it. Also, if you wanna, if you haven't done so already, you should be subscribed so that whenever we have videos, new videos uploaded, usually we upload every week as these classes go live every Wednesday, then you will get a notification on that one so you won't miss it. And that is where your share button is. If you want to share it, it will give you a link. You can share it on Facebook or to your friend's Facebook wall or maybe text it to your friends who are interested in medical coding or are in medical coding that needs a refresher too. So it's always good. And then maybe we can talk about these scenarios with them. <laughs> it's gonna like um, studying at the same time. So. All right, and without further ado, I think I have the task to move on now with our digestive systems. And at this point, we are going to be talking about the digestive system transplants. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with intestinal allotransplants. So basically, um, well, I guess I should go back first. Let's talk about... Um, Digestive system transplants first. I should have um, mentioned this. Digestive system organ transplantation is a medical procedure in which an organ is removed from one body and placed in the body of a recipient to replace a damage or a missing organ. As far as the digestive goes, um, there's three likely um, three procedures likely that they're going to do as far as transplantation. They can do intestinal allotransplantation. They can also do liver transplantation here that's part of your digestive system and sometimes can be a pancreatic um, transplantation as well. Okay, now one thing you have to pay attention to is that um, as far as this transplantations, a um, you can you can be dealing with a donor that sometimes can be living or a deceased and we are going to go over those guidelines with you right about now so if you look at your cpt page 321 it talks about the intestinal allotransplantation and basically there's up to four possible 
procedures done here and you're going to be coding these procedures um, that are done by the doctors during that transplantation. So what you're going to be looking out for is, is this a donor or a cadaver living? Okay, as far as the enterectomy. Also, you're going to be coding for the back bench work and the transplants. Okay. So that's just it. That's the, all the things that you need to pay attention to. And you code only the procedures being performed, like I said. So pretty straightforward. And this is really a good illustration of the allotransplantation there. So you'll find your intestine, the deceased intestine being removed, and then they will gonna, you know, either from a donor cadaver or a living donor, um, they're gonna uh, replace that with a new intestine. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so we move on to the liver transplantation. You will find these guidelines on page 338. There's another good illustration there too. Again, you may be able, there's actually four possible procedures you may be um, coding from this. You can um, code the removal from a cadaver donor or it can be a removal from a donor, a living donor. Also watch for back, back bench work. If that happens, you will be needing you will need to code that and of course the transplantation and again you code only the procedures being performed and basically a liver transplantation is the replacement of a deceased liver with a healthy liver from another person or can be a you know cadaver donor so that's your illustration right there and this is just pretty straightforward over there so that's good so hopefully you do have any questions here and I'm going to move on to the next one, which would be the pancreat or pancreatic transplantation or pancreas transplantation. So as far as the pancreas transplantation is an organ transplant that involves implanting a healthy pancreas into a person who usually, usually a patient has diabetes on this one. And you have three possible procedures, the removal from the cadaver, the back bench work, and the transplant. And again, you code only the procedures being performed. Okay, so your cadaver donor, you're going to be using that the cadaver donor pancreatectomy. Your code would be 48550. This already includes the uh, harvesting of the pancreas graft with or without duodenal segment and cold preservation of the graft. Okay, your back bench work is a standard preparation of the cadaver donor with the pancreas and the recipient pancreas transplantation or allotransplantation, sorry, which includes the transplantation of allograft and care of the recipient, you will use that code for 8554. Okay, that's cool. And I think that's it. So basically, like I said, what, just watch the procedures that you are going to be coding. You only code the procedures being performed in your documentation, okay? Are we ready to code? I have a good scenario coming up for you. I'm going to read this. We have our answer choices A, 48554, 48551 with modifier 59, 48550 with modifier 59, B, 48554, 48551 with modifier 59, C, 48554, 48552 with modifier 59, 48551 with modifier 59 and 48550 with modifier 59. For your answer choice D, you have 48554, 48552 with modifier 59, 48550 with modifier 59. A 39-year-old plant super supervisor has been out on medical leave since being diagnosed with pancreatic insufficiency. Today, he was learned or he has learned that a donor has been secured and will undergo pancreatic transplantation. The transplant surgeon removed the pancreas from the donor, carried out standard back bench work and reconstruction of the donor pancreas and venous anastomosis. Then allotransplantation into the donor took place. Which of the codes best describes this encounter? Are you ready coders? I'm gonna put the time timer for a minute and a half and you will find that bar over here when it's um, already all the way to your right that means it's time for you to get your answers in the chat okay so I'll put the timer now and good luck Hi. 
actually, you know what, Coder, sorry about that. I'm actually going to go ahead and fix this too because it looks like my timer is not working. So give me one second. And I want to make sure that this is working. Okay, should be working now. Okay, going to try this again, hopefully. All right, I think... I don't see it, but you know what coders, I'm just giving you the time, the old fashioned way. <laughs> so I'm going to set the time now and yes, you can get ahead, go ahead and get started and I'll be back in a minute and a half. Okay, coders, that is indeed time. I apologize apologize again for not having that bar there. I really like that one. It's so cool, but um, uh, not working on my end. I think I might need to refresh it, but I don't want to waste your time with that one. I'll make sure in my next scenario, we're going to get that thing going. But anyways, how are you feeling about this scenario? Looks like some of you got this correct, so that's good. So let's go over this pretty quick. There goes my bar. <laughs> the answer for this is C, and here's why. So we're going to go over our keywords here. It really helps us out. We have 39-year-old. That's what we're looking for. Pancreatic insufficiency. We have a donor. Pancreatic transplantation. We have transplant. Surgeon removed the pancreas from the donor. Standard bank backbench work. Okay, we have to pay attention to that. Also, reconstruction of the donor pancreas. And we also have the venous anastomosis and the allotransplantation into the donor took place. So how many procedures are we dealing in this particular scenario? So remember, we have to code all of those procedures that is done during the encounter. So let's go over them. Okay, first of all, we do we did have the allotransplantation there, okay, into the donor, the transplantation of the pancreatic allograft. So that's one, definitely, right? So we can code that as 48554. We can see them in all of your answer choices here. So we're good in that one. And that will be coded first because that would be the most complex procedure. So we like this. Okay, what else? We have a standard backbench work. Remember, that's one of our guidelines. We have to code them to if it's being you know, performed during the surgery. So that's going to be coded as 48551, the standard backbench or backbench standard preparation of the cadaver donor pancreas allograft prior to transplantation. So we like this one too. So we have that another star there. So we know we can indicate that, hey, we can code that too. What else? We have reconstruction of the donor pancreas and venous anastomosis. Okay, we are going to code that too for the cadaver donor pancreas, venous anastomosis there. 
So we like that as well. So we now have three codes. Finally, we do have the code for the donor pancreatectomy, including the code preservation. Okay, for that um, with or without duodenal segment for transplantation. So that's the preparation of the donor pancreatectomy. So we're also going to need to decode that. So how many procedures altogether? We have four. So with that being said, if you look at A, it's missing the back bench reconstruction of the cadaver donor pancreas. So we're going to eliminate that. B here is missing two of the procedures, okay? So we're going to eliminate that as well. D is missing the standard preparation, the back bench, okay? This one, that's going to be wrong. So what your answer is going to be is C, okay? So you have your transplantation of the pancreatic allograft, your allotransplantation, your eight. Uh, 48552 with modifier 59, that's a distinct procedure. That's for the back bench reconstruction. Okay, 48551 with modifier 59, because another distinct procedure would be your back bench standard, standard preparation of the cadaver donor. And finally, your 48550 with modifier 59 for your donor pancreatectomy. Okay, so altogether, your answer is C. So hopefully, hopefully you learned something or you like this scenario. And I think that's it for me. I am now going to turn you over to Miss Tracy. She's going to have a really good uh, instruction with you on hemorrhoids. Whenever you're ready, Miss Tracy. I am ready. Thank you, Miss Rochelle, for that wonderful explanation on transplants and the scenario. Um, oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think. One second, shared my screen too early. Okay, thank you again, Ms. Rochelle, and let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna move on to our next subject here. We're gonna talk about hemorrhoids. And hemorrhoids are swollen veins that are in the lowest part of the rectum and anus. And sometimes those walls um, of the blood vessels, they'll stretch really thin that the veins will bulge and get irritated, especially when um, you're eliminating. Um, hemorrhoids can live either outside the rectum or anus, as you see right here in this um, diagram, those are the external, referred to as the external hemorrhoids. Um, and then the others will live inside the rectum and anus, and those are the internal um, hemorrhoids that you see here. Um, now, when they, um, sometimes those internal hemorrhoids, they can, it's called prolapse. They can prolapse, or um, in other words, fall out fall down as you see right here, okay, in this illustration. And that's called a prolapsing internal hemorrhoid, okay? So just know the difference between the two. You have your external, your internal, and your prolapsing, okay? All right, let's move along. Okay, and here, here's another just little illustration that you can see as well with these um, hemorrhoids. Um, there are some guidelines that I do want to talk to you as well about the hemorrhoids, but first of all, let's look. There's a picture. There's another um, picture. No, it's not, <laughs> it's not very appealing, but on page 336, you'll see this image, and this basically, um, the way the hemorrhoids are measured are in columns and groups, the internal hemorrhoids, and so the hemorrhoids lie along the anal canal in three columns or Group. So um, the major areas, you have the right posterior, which is um, at the one o'clock um, point. You have the right interior, which is at the five o'clock, and left lateral would be at the nine o'clock position. Okay. All right. And some of the guidelines that we want to um, pay attention to here for code range 46260, or 46250 to 46262 is, first of all, are they internal or external? Is there a fissurectomy or a fissurectomy? Um, and then also know those columns, okay? Know those three major columns, all righty? And with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and move right along. Oh, there's your positions. Sorry about that, I forgot my clicks. All right, and I have a scenario for you, so are you all ready, hopefully? Here's our scenario for our hemorrhoidectomy, hemorrhoids. We have A, 46221, B, 46946, C, 46260, or D, 0249T. 
A 30-year-old stay-at-home mom has a history of hemorrhoids after her third pregnancy. She arrives today for removal. After the patient is properly prepped, draped, and anesthetized, a proctoscope is in, entered into the rectum. Under ultrasound guidance, the physician locates the arteries supplying blood to the hemorrhoids. The vascular bundles are ligated and tied off to stop the flow of blood to the hemorrhoids, where they will ultimately shrink and fall off. Which codes best describe this encounter? And you will have a minute and a half, and your time begins now. Good luck, coders. All right, everybody, get your answers in. And let's go ahead and reveal our answer, shall we? Our answer is going to be D. Okay, you notice that one's kind of not like the others right there. We have a T there at the end of it. So go ahead and let me know if you know what this code, where this code is coming from. All right, so with, let's go ahead and look at the keywords. We have 30-year-olds, history, hemorrhoids, proctoscope, rectum, ultrasound guidance, arteries, hemorrhoids, vascular bundles, ligated, tied off, stop the flow of blood. Okay, so let's first go ahead and look at these this first code and answer A, 46221, and that is for a hemorrhoidectomy internal by rubber band ligation or ligations. Um, so it does say, if we look in here, I see a keyword, I see ligated. Um, However, it doesn't say how this was how this was tied off. It doesn't say that it was by rubber band. So that is going to be incorrect, okay? So we'll get rid of that. Um, our next code is 46946. Let's, or actually 46, yeah, 46, I think that's the one we're looking at next. 46946, that's hemorrhoidectomy internal by ligation other than rubber bands, okay? Doesn't mention, it just says it's ligated. It doesn't say it was by rubber band ligation. Um, however, if we look down at 49, uh, 46946, so that's the parent code above, this says for two or more hemorrhoid columns or groups, and it doesn't mention anything about the columns or groups there, so that is incorrect. We have something more specific that we're looking for here, and if we look down at 46260, this is saying that this is for internal and external hemorrhoids, two or more columns or groups. Again, it says that this was inserted into the rectum, so it doesn't mention that this was internal and external, and it also doesn't mention the columns or groups. Now, if we look down, so we're going to get rid of that one. Now, if we look down at our T code here, now these T codes are not, so these A, B, and C, those are our category one codes, right? These T codes, anytime you see something ending in a T, that is coming from your category three 
codes, okay? And um, those codes are temporary codes and they are for emerging technology um, service and procedures. So they haven't yet became a category one code yet, but we can use these codes and we can they can stand alone, okay? Unlike the category two codes where those are just for performance measures and they can't be listed alone. These T codes can actually stand on their own. And if we read this code here, that is for ligation, I like that keyword there, um, hemorrhoidal vascular bundles. Looking at my keywords, look at this, it says the vascular bundles are ligated and tied off, okay? And it also says that it includes ultrasound guidance. Again, this was done under ultrasonic guidance. So I'm liking all that. All of that is very specific to what happened in our, in our um, scenario here. So our code is going to be 0249T, okay? So we are gonna use that category three code rather than a category one code in this case, okay? And that's it. So let me know in the chat what you think. We have our instructor standing by to help you. If you have any questions or if you had an aha moment, let us know that as well. And with that being said, let's go ahead and move on and we're gonna talk about our next um, subject here. Okay, so we're gonna talk about hernias and a hernia is um, basically referred to a condition where the organ is displaced and protrudes through the wall of the cavity that's containing it. Okay, the ca um, that cavity that holds the intestines in place, that's called the mesentery. And anytime you have a break or a weak point in that mesentery, the intestines can come through it. Okay, and the symptoms of that can include um, bulging, swelling, or pain. Um, and sometimes there is no symptoms. But um, treatment is basically monitoring the condition and if needed, surgery can return that tissue to its normal location and close the opening. And so if you see here, there's some different types of hernias. You have your epigastric, and this is pretty much just referring to the areas of those hernias, okay? So your epigastric is at the upper abdominal, um, at the midline, direct inguinal near the opening of the inguinal canal. You have your indirect inguinal at, at also at the opening of the inguinal canal. Um, the umbilical is at the navel. The femoral occurs in the femoral canal, and the incisional is at the site of a previous surgical incision, okay? So um, the surgical, sometimes that, that point right there where someone had surgery and it was closed up, sometimes it can cause a break in that um, wall right there, and that's referred to as an incisional hernia. And there's a specific way um, we code those. There's a guideline that we have to pay attention to when we're coding for those, okay? So, oops, sorry, actually, um, speaking of the guideline, let's talk about those real quick before we get on to our scenario. So for our hernias, we, we want to know the type of hernia. So as you see here, we have some types of hernias. So know that the type of hernia you're dealing with. In these um, codes, they are age-driven, so really important to um, hone in on the age of that patient. Um, also know if it's an initial or a recurrence, okay? So is this the first time it's happening or is this a recurrence of that hernia? That's important to remember because it's going to determine the code that you select for that. Um, also, you want to know if the hernia is reducible. So you'll see that word reducible. That basically just means, um, is it able to be pushed back in, okay? And um, uh, mesh is, bun okay, so the mesh, this is what you really need to remember, it's bundled into all the hernia codes except for 49560 to 49566, okay? So pay attention to that mesh. They are bundled in all hernia repairs except for our incisional and our ventral hernias, okay? And that's all I'm gonna say. And I have a scenario for you. So here we go, here's our answers. We have A, 49505, 49568, B, 49507, 49568, C, 49505, or D, 49507. A 37-year-old male patient arrives to the OR suite prepped and draped for incarcerated inguinal hernia repair. The mesh was applied to contain the repair. What is or are the correct procedure codes for this encounter? All right, everyone. A minute and a half and your time begins now. Good luck.
Okay, okay, that is time. And get your answers in the chat, please. And while you're getting your answers in the chat, I'm just going to observe some things that I see in my answers over here because we'd like to always read those answers first to kind of see if we see some things going on. And what I see going on here is that A and C share the same first listed code and B and D share the same first listed. So it's going to be easy to kind of narrow down it, narrow this down to two answers, okay? Um, based off of looking at that, those code language, or the code language for both of those codes. Um, and then if I look at A and B, it has an additional code there. And if we're familiar with coding in this section, that 49568 is for our mesh, okay? So some things to remember there as well. So if you know your guidelines on this, you're gonna be great and you're gonna get this um, correct. So let's go ahead and reveal the answer. Oh, actually, we're doing keywords, I guess. 37-year-old, um, incarcerated, inguinal hernia repair, mesh, and that's it. And we're going to look at our answers over here, our codes. 49505 is for repair of an initial inguinal hernia, um, age five years or older, reducible, okay? And then 49507, so these both come from the same family, is for repair initial inguinal hernia, which is what we have here, inguinal hernia repair, um, except for this one is incarcerated or strangulated. So remember I was saying reducible just means that you that um, hernia can pretty much easily be moved back into place. When it's incarcerated, it means that that herniated tissue becomes trapped and it cannot be reduced by simple manipulation. Okay, so it cannot be easily put back into place. And that can lead to bowel obstruction or the strangulation, which is cutting off the blood supply. Okay, so this is definitely incarcerated because it tells us there in our keywords. So that 49505 is going to be incorrect because this cannot, this is not reducible. It is incarcerated. All right. So we can go ahead and get rid of A and we can also get rid of C. Okay. Just like that, we're able to narrow it down to B and D and 49507. We know that's our correct first code. And that 49568, that is the add-on code for the mesh. Okay. So this is for the implantation of the mesh. And you might say, yeah, mesh was used. So we would code that. However, there's a very specific guideline here that you need to make sure that you mark in your book, notate this, highlight this guideline. Um, and this tells us implantation of mesh or other prosthesis for open incisional or ventral hernia repair or mesh for closure of debridement for necrotizing soft tissue infection. Um, and it tells you, let's go point out the guideline, with the exception of the incisional hernia repairs, um, and you see code 49560 to 49566 for that. There they are. Okay, those are our incisional and ventral repairs. The use of mesh or other prosthesis is not separately reported. So unless you're coding for an incisional or a ventral hernia, the mesh is going to be bundled. This is not an incisional or a ventral hernia. This is an inguinal hernia. So like our guideline tells us, that mesh is bundled. Okay, so we can go ahead and eliminate answer B and D is going to be the correct answer. And you may have figured it out the other way. If you knew that that mesh was bundled, you may have already eliminated just A and B on site. Okay, so that's another um, good, adva great advantage of knowing the, those guidelines. If you're looking at this and you say, hey, this is inguinal, I know that only those incisional um, and the ventral hernia repairs are um, the mesh is coded. You can just look at this and eliminate just on site. Okay. So that's the beauty of knowing those guidelines. And um, if you said D, great job. If you didn't say D, but you learned something, as Mrs. J said, that is priceless and that's what matters. So I'm gonna go ahead, I think that was it. I'm gonna go ahead and hand it on over to Miss Rochelle. Yes, thank you. That was a good one too. Wow, I like the scenarios. Yep, we do enjoy our digestive <laughs> chapters. We like coding them. It's kind of a little bit, not so intense as you would with cardio last week, right, coders? And Miss Tracy, great job. And well, since we are having fun and we have a little bit more time, what do you say, coders? Are you in for some coding challenge? I think I'm going to bring in some scenarios and Miss Tracy is going to be bringing in some of her challenge questions too. So are you ready? Okay, but you are. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first coding challenge, our answer choices. We have A, 47536, B, 
C47538, C47536, and 47538 with modifier 59, and D is 47537 and 47536. A 40-year-old photographer arrives at or to the ED jaundice and with abdominal pain. The patient has a history of blocked bile duct and has an existing catheter to drain bile from the duct into the duodenum. The ED physician determined that the stent was no longer working, causing fluid to build up into the patient's liver. The physician recommended that the patient have a new stent placed to unblock the duct immediately. The gastroenterology surgeon was contacted and the patient was moved to the OR. After the patient was properly prepped, draped, and anesthetized, the surgeon injected contrast material, material for better visualization of the liver and the bile duct. Under fluoroscopic guidance, a needle is inserted through the existing percutaneous opening into the liver, then advanced to the bile duct. Through the needle, through the, needle the provider inserts a guide wire. A stent is inserted over the guide wire through the obstructed bile. The existing stent is removed. The guide wire is withdrawn and a balloon is expanded inside the cat or the catcher to as a replacement. The bile duct appears to be unblocked and the bile is now able to drain into the duodenum. The catheter is removed, leaving the new stent in place, which codes best describes this encounter. All right, coders, I'll give you a minute and a half for this challenge, and your time starts now. Good luck. Okay, coders, that is time, that is time. Get your answers in the chat and we'll go ahead and take a look at this one. So the answer for this is going to be B. If you got it, great coding. If you missed it, well, let's go ahead and take a look how B is our answer. So let's go over our keywords. We have a 40 year old, we have ED, we have history of blocked bile duct, we have existing catheter, drain bile duct, duodenum, new stent placed. We also have fluoroscopic guidance there, needle inserted, existing percutaneous opening to the liver. So that's a good keyword there. We have a bile duct again, stent. So Looks like stent keeps appearing on this procedure. Inserted, obstructed bile, existing stent is removed. We also have a balloon catheter or catcher replacement, and a new stent is put into place. So our answer um, code range is as far as 47536 all the way to 47538. So we're going to have to take a look at these keywords if they match our scenario. So let's Again, what we're dealing with is that we did have that um, you know, stent being placed, okay? Also, we were talking about draining the catheter, okay? 
from the bile duct into the duodenum, okay? So those are the things that we need to pay attention to and the fluoroscopic and percutaneous. So if you're gonna look at 47536 there, okay, that's your code for exchange of biliary drainage catheter. It would have been okay. However, look at the examples given to us there. It's for external, internal, and external, or conversion of internal, external to external only, okay? This is not what we're looking for. So we're going to go ahead. My box should be here. So this is not exactly what we're looking for. So we're going to go ahead and eliminate that one. Um, look at 47537 there. That's your removal of biliary drainage catheter. This is percutaneous. We like this, requiring fluoroscopic guidance. So we see that percutaneous there. So this is, you know, more likely our codes. This is the biliary drainage catheter. So this is talking about the drainage of that catheter, which is exactly what happened. However, there's more also. There was a new stent in place. So as you can see, we have a red box there. Usually that indicates wrong, but this procedure is actually good. We we see this in our keywords. So I'm going to just, you know, um, just keep your, your eye on this one because I'm going to get back on this because there's a guideline that refers to this. Okay, so just keep an eye on that one. I'm going to drive your attention to that 47538 code. Okay, <laughs> so that 47538 codes, I already um, eliminated eliminated the answer so but i want to just drive your attention here at 47538 okay if you look at this code description there it talks about placement of stents into the bile duct bile duct which happened in our scenario percutaneous it includes a diagnostic chulangiography Imaging guidance, example, the fluoroscopy, so that also covered it, which we like. By balloon dilation, catheter exchange, basically we did have an exchange, so they basically removed the old stent there and then put a new one in place, okay? And the catheter is performed and all associated radiological supervision and interpretation, and this talks about an existing access, okay? Because that one actually is in our parenthetical guidelines. It's telling us here, and this is what I wanted you to pay attention to. Do not report 47538 in conjunction with these codes here. One of them is that 47537. Remember that code about the drainage, the biliary drainage catheter. It talks about here that you do not code them if in the same procedure there's the same they're using the same percutaneous access so if you look back it actually talks about them the the surgeon is using the existing percutaneous opening into the liver so it's the same access that they use and when that happens as your gu guideline is telling us you do not co or report them together okay so that's the reason why i eliminated that d answer there 47537 along with that and um, also that 47538 and also this 47536, that's, that cannot happen as well. That's a, we call it the DNC notes as well. So we eliminated that as well. So all you really need as far as this scenario goes is that code 47538. It covers everything. And that's it. So what do you think about that challenge? Okay, good. Hopefully you enjoyed that or you learned something that would be priceless. I have another one coming up, coders. And let's try this one, okay? So we have A, 49491 with modifier 63, 55040 with modifiers 59 and 63, B, 49492 with modifier 63, and 55040 with modifiers 59 and modifier 63. C, 49492, and D, 49491. An eight-week-old infant born premature at 35 weeks and weighs three kilograms, presents today with an incarcerated inguinal hernia and will undergo herniography and hydroselectomy. The infant is properly prepped, draped, and anesthetized. The physician makes an incision over the inguinal region all the way down to the or all the way down to expose the inguinal canal. The hernia or the hernia sac is identified. The scar tissue around the hernia and within the hernia sac were removed. The hernia is moved back into place and sutured. 
the scrotum is also inspected and a hydrocele is noted. The hydrocele is incised and fluid removed from the scrotal sac. The hernia defect is pre is repaired with absorbable sutures, and the inguinal canal is reconstructed. Bleeding was controlled by hemostasis. The surgical instruments were removed, and the incisions were closed in layered fashion. The code, or which codes, best describes this encounter? And I'll give you a minute and a half, and it starts now. Good luck, coders. All right, that is time, that is time. Wow, I feel like you guys are did great on this one because Miss Tracy went over this really great discussion about hernia just a little while ago. So great job coders. Yes, the answer is C if, you're ans if you chose that. If you didn't, let's go over this together, okay? So we have an eight week old infant. So we have 35 weeks incarcerated inguinal hernia, that's our that's our procedure we're coding for. We have hernia herniorraphy. We have hydroselectomy as well, incision. Hernia sac are removed back into place and sutured. It mentions about hydrocele. Incised, removed, hernia defect, repaired, inguinal canal reconstructed. So basically we're dealing with an eight week um, infant with incarcerated inguinal hernia. So there's two ways to look at this. First, if you're gonna look at this code family here, all of them are coded from one family, from the repair of the, sorry about my own clicks there, so just the family here, repair initial inguinal hernia of a preterm infant younger than 37 weeks, um, gestation at, or at gestation at birth, performed from birth, from birth up to 50 weeks post-conception age. So now we are at 35 weeks, so we can definitely code this from this, we like that. It also includes your um, hydrocelectomy, with or without, it's telling us here in your code description. And they did perform that um, hydrocelectomy, right, over there, okay? So they also, uh, they also perform that. So all of that is already included in your code language. However, we have to determine whether or not we're coding this as reducible or incarcerated. Okay, so looking at our keywords, definitely it was documented as incarcerated. So we definitely have to code this as 49492 to indicate that this is in fact incarcerated. So that's one way to look at it. So you can eliminate 49491 answers there on your A and D. Or as you can see, my box is telling, driving your attention to that modifier 63, which is also a good, um, you know, talking point because that modifier 63 it involves, or um, 
pertains to that parenthetical guideline. So it's actually telling us here that from this family code, there is a parenthetical guideline that says do not report modifier 63 in conjunction with these two codes, 49491 and 49492. And you can see that as a DNC. So you are also going to be able to eliminate A and B right off the bat right there. If you went that route, that is perfectly fine. So again, just to wrap it all up, our answer is 49492 for that repair of an incarcerated or strangulated hernia, okay? All right, <laughs> great job coders. And as promised, Ms. Tracy has more challenge questions for you guys. Thank you. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Thank you so much, Miss Rochelle. Great scenario. And I do have a couple more for you all. Hopefully you are ready. And let me grab this. Okay, so here's our answers. We have A44204, B44204, 45378, modifier 59. C44140 or D44140 45378 modifier 59. Uh, Mary, a 25 year old PhD candidate, has been experiencing bloating, abdominal pain, and weight loss. The gastroenterologist suspects that the patient has irritable bowel disease. The physician will perform a diagnostic colonoscopy to determine the source of the patient's symptoms. The patient arrives to the OR where she is prepped draped and properly anesthetized. The physician examines the patient's entire large bowel through the colonoscope. Upon examination, he determines that the patient's descending colon was severely diseased and in failure. He decided to resect the colon between the splenic flexure and sigmoid colon. The physician removed the colonoscope, then made an incision into the abdomen over this descending colon. Colectomy with anastomosis was carried out. Hemostasis was achieved through electrocautery. The patient's incision was closed in layered fashion. Which codes best describe this encounter? All right, everyone, everybody. A minute and a half and your time begins now. Good luck, coders. All right, everyone, go ahead and put your answers here. And let's go ahead and look at the answers first. While you're getting your answers in the chat, I notice here what I observe is A and B, first listed code. C and D have the same first listed code. So I want to first dis, um, determine the differences between those two. And then we have an additional code in B and D, okay, with a modifier 59. So let's see. Dun, 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 dun. The answer is D. Okay, let's find out why. Our keywords are 25-year-old, gastroenterologist, irritable bowel, irritable bowel disease, diagnostic colonoscopy, examines, large bowel, 
colonoscope, descending colon, resect colon, splenic, um, splenic flexure, sigmoid colon, removed colonoscope, incision, abdomen, um, descending colon, colectomy with anastomosis, and electrocautery. All right, so um, we have a couple of different things going on here. Um, first of all, I see this colectomy with anastomosis, okay? And if we look at the difference between 44204 and 44140, um, let's go ahead and see what those say, okay? So this one right here is, um, this 44204, these, both of these codes are for a colectomy. The difference is 44204, if you look at the parent, this is for a laparoscopic colectomy, okay? Um, I don't see anything about this um, being laparoscopic, okay? So in that case, we can go ahead and get rid of A and B because it said there was an incision, okay? For the colectomy, there was an incision. All right, so in that case, we can go ahead and get rid of A and B. All righty, and if we look at 44140, there's what we're looking for, the partial colectomy with the anastomosis, okay? So I like the 44140 for our first um, code there. Now we have an additional code, so we have to decide if we're going to code this 45378, okay? So let's look at that one. That is for the um, colonoscopy, um, flexible colonoscopy, and that's diagnostic okay so remember I told you when you're um, I think some of the last classes I said if in this diagnostic when it says diagnostic here you might just want to put DX and then highlight that separate procedure I know mrs. J spoke with you earlier you had a great scenario on this earlier mrs. J walked you through um, so we have to just determine is this a separate procedure or not in this case we are going to code this four five three seven eight we're gonna code this um, colonoscopy, the diagnostic colonoscopy, because um, these are, these were done, um, they, uh, so this was, okay, so this diagnostic scope turned into an open procedure. One was through a scope and one was through an incision. So they are distinctly different from each other because one was a scope and one is an incision. So in this case, this col colonoscopy is a separate procedure, okay? So we would code it in addition to the code for our, um, our colectomy, all righty? So that, in that case, we can go ahead and get rid of C and then D is our correct answer, okay? So go ahead and type in the chat um, what you think about this one. And again, I just wanna say that those procedures are distinctly different because there are two different, um, there are two different procedures, okay? We have a laparoscopic um, and an excision, okay? All righty, and that is it. And I think I have one more for you guys. And here's our um, our second challenge question. We have A44960 modifier 22, R10.9, R11.2, D72.829, K35.3. We have B44950 modifier 22, R10.9, R11.2, D72.829, C49. 44960 modifier 22, K35.2, or D, or 4005, 4495R10.9, R11.2, K35.2. A patient was taken to the emergency room for severe abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. A white blood cell count was taken, and the results showed an elevated WBC count. The general surgeon suspected appendicitis and performed an emergent appendectomy. The patient has extensive adhesion secondary to two previous cesarean deliveries. Dissection of this altered anatomical field um, required the surgeon to spend 40 additional intraoperative minutes. The surgeon discovered that the appendix was not ruptured, nor was it hot. Extra time was documented in order to thoroughly irrigate the peritoneum. What CPT and ICD-10 CM codes are reported? All right, everyone, a minute and a half, and your time begins now. Good luck.
All right, all right. Go ahead and place your answers in the chat. Okay, and looking at my answers, I see we have uh, procedure codes and diagnosis codes here. Um, we have A and B, A, A and C, sorry, share the same first listed code. Um, B is pretty close to those two. So they're, they're all, we're just gonna have to read forensically to ter determine the difference. And we see some modifier 22s there in A, B and C. All right. Um, and I always like to look at those category letters as well. So we see some R's. So those are usually signs and symptoms. We have K from our, diag um, our digestive, um, that's our digestive category. And those are some things that you learn uh, being an AMCA student, which is really amazing. Um, I must say um, that helps me a lot just to recognize those category letters really do help. So um, let's go ahead and reveal. Our answer is B. Okay, and our keywords, we have severe abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, elevated white blood count. We have suspected appendicitis, emergent appendectomy, extensive adhesions, spent 40 additional intraoperative minutes, appendix, not ruptured, extra time was documented. Okay, so first let's go ahead and look at 44005, and this is a separate procedure for enterolysis, which is freeing of intestinal adhesions. It mentions some adhesions in our scenario, but it doesn't really mention anything about, um, you know, that being part of the procedure. And even if it was, it is a separate, we gotta pay attention to that separate procedure. So when a more extensive procedure is done, we do not code that separately. So A, or sorry, <laughs> D is going to be wrong. Okay, so looking at, at 44950, that is for appendectomy. Okay, that's just the um, just a simple appendectomy there. And if we look over in our scenario, uh, appendectomy was done. Um, so I like that code. And if we look down at 44960, that's for an appendectomy for a ruptured appendix with abscess or generalized um, peritonitis. Okay, and it doesn't mention anything about this being ruptured. In fact, it says that it is not ruptured. So it specifically says that this was not ruptured. Okay, so that means we can't code it as, um, we can't code 44960 for a ruptured appendix when our documentation contradicts that. So we can go ahead and get rid of answer A and we can get rid of answer C. So just like that, it narrows it down to B. Okay, and I wanna check that modifier. We have a modifier 22 on 44950. That is for increased procedural services. So when extra time is spent um, with this patient, um, that time, that needs to be documented why the extra time was spent, and it clearly was. It says the extra time was documented in order to thoroughly irrigate the peritoneum, but it says that the, the um, surgeon spent an additional 40 minutes, okay? So that justifies our modifier 22. Okay, now finally, we have these this, those two R codes and we have that D code there. So if we look up at the top, um, I know in some of the other codes it has that K code that for the um, appendic uh, appendicitis. However, it says that this doctor or the surgeon suspects appendicitis. But if you look down, it says the appendix was not ruptured nor was it hot and there is no um, definitive diagnosis here. So when there's not a definitive diagnosis, although he did remove that appendix, if there's no definitive diagnosis, we're going to code the symptoms, okay? The signs and symptoms. So the abdominal pain is R10.9. He also has some nausea and vomiting, which is going to be that combo code of R11.2. And then D72.829 is for that elevated white blood cell counts, okay? So that's it. So B is our correct answer. All right, let me know what you think in the chat. I'll be hanging out with you there. If you have any questions, please, please ask me. I'll see you there. And I'm gonna go ahead and hand this over to the wonderful Mrs. J. Why, thank you, Mrs. Tracy, the wonderful Mrs. Tracy. That was an excellent, excellent review on both of those scenarios. So hopefully coders, I know you learned something. I know I did. Every time I see these scenarios, I get something from it. So outstanding. All right. Uh -oh. I think I'm just going, oh, look at this. 
I'm just having a good time going backwards, so let me just not bore you. And I just want to make sure, Mrs. Tracy, that you can hear me. I can hear you, Mrs. J. You sound awesome. perfect. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. All right, so let me show my screen. And I'm going to just go ahead and read the scenario. A, 43846 with a 53 modifier. E66.01, B43847 with a 53 modifier, E66.01, C43847 with a 52 modifier, E66.9, and Z68.39, D43770 with a 53 modifier, E66.9 and Z68.39. A 35 year old morbidly obese beast patient presents for gastric restriction. The patient is properly prepped and draped and the proper anesthesia administered. The physician performs the gastric restrictive procedure by placing a restrictive device with bypass and ruin Y gastroenterostomy greater than 150 centimeters. During the procedure, the patient began to hemorrhage. The surgeon quickly ended the procedure and stabilized the patient code the encounter. All right, I'm gonna give you a minute and a half. All right, how did you do, coders? How did you do? If you said B, ooh, ooh. outstanding. All right, coders, if you didn't say B, let's go on and learn something. The first thing that we'll do is highlight our keywords. 35-year-old, morbidly obese, gastric restriction, gastric restrictive procedure, restrictive device, bypass, RU and Y, gastroenterostomy, greater than 150 CMs, hemorrhage, ended the procedure. All right, so let's look at what took place. We had a gastric restrictive procedure. So if we look at D, D is coding four three seven seven zero and this code is for a laparoscopy it could have a laparoscopy could have been done but our documentation says that a gastric restrictive procedure took place and you know what coders it's not what we think it's always what we read 
So we're going to eliminate D because there's no mention of a laparoscopy. Next, 43846. This is the code. It, it's a good code and it's for gastric restrictive procedure with gastric bypass, but 43846 is incorrect and here's why. 150 centimeters or less. Our procedure is for greater than 150 centimeters. So 43846 is incorrect. Now, if you look at this parenthetical guideline, and remember parenthetical guidelines are your friend. So if you read it, it'll tell you for greater than 150 centimeters, use 43847. And if we look down at 43847, this is the code for small with small intestine reconstruction to limit absorption. So you'll code, here's the parent language, gastric restrictive procedure with gastric bypass for morbid obesity with small in, in, intestine reconstruction to limit absorption. So there's no way that we would have known that. No way we would have known to use um, 43847 for anything greater than 150 centimeters. So it's always good to read your parenthetical guidelines. All right, so that leaves us with B and C. So what is the difference between the two? The difference is this modifier, modifier 53 and modifier 52. So that pretty much will tell us what is the correct answer. So our documentation says that the patient began to hemorrhage and the surgeon quickly ended the procedure. So if we go to our modifiers and we read the language of modifier 52, this is the code for reduced services. And if you use modifier 52, it is used for procedures that is partially reduced or eliminated at the discretion of the physician or other qualified healthcare professional. So I don't think we had a reduced service. No, it sounds more like the doctor discontinued the procedure because the documentation says that the doctor ended the procedure. And the definition says the physician or other qualified healthcare professional professional may elect to terminate a surgical or diagnostic procedure due to extenuating circumstances, et cetera. This is our case and modifier 53 is our code. So of the four answers, B is correct. And if we, let's go ahead and finish our job and our job is to code this out and our diagnoses E66.01, this is the code for morbidly obesity, morbid obesity. And E66.01 is morbid, severe obesity due to excess calories. And B is correct. All right, coders, if you have questions, go ahead and place them in the chat. But I want to recognize those that got it correct, outstanding. And if you learn something, that's priceless. Great job. All right, so we are almost at the end, but I would be doing everyone a disservice if I did not acknowledge the king. Yes, you are a king for the day. Praveen, the king, you are the forensic king. Do you know why? Well, Praveen, found an error, a guideline mistake that we made back in integumentary. So let's take a look at what we missed. This was our biopsies presentation in the integumentary system. That's our very first um, lecture. We talked about um, biopsies and this is an examination of tissue removed from a living body. And there are three types of biopsies. You have an incisional biopsy that you code for, a punch biopsy that you code for, and tangential. Tangential is, well, I'm 
is basically what you see. It's a shaving off, okay, or saucerization. So let's look at all three. Incisional, of course, is using um, a scalpel or using some cutting device to um, create a, hmm, I would say a split thickness. I wouldn't say a full thickness. It could be though, full thickness, it could be. Um, you've got your punch, which using a circular or cyclical device and it punches down through the skin and grabs that um, tissue for biopsy. And then you have tangential. But here is the interesting about this, these three, they have a hierarchy. Your incisional is the highest level followed by, I wanna make sure I'm saying this right. I just wanna make sure. Okay, your incisional is first, followed by your punch. Yes, because this is a full thickness, followed by punch biopsy, then tangential. Tangential is third. So that may have been an error too that we missed. So incisional first, followed by punch, then tangential. And then we had some guidelines. And the guidelines pretty much tell you how to code these procedures in your code series 11102, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And then there were some, there was some language on different lesions or different sites and how to code multiple procedures. Then what was also significant was the types of biopsies they were. You had your partial thickness um, biopsies, your full thickness biopsies, and so forth. And then they defined what a tangential biopsy was in the code series 11102 and 11. 103. And then you've got your punch biopsy. What is that? That's a punch tool. Um, it's a full thickness biopsy. And then you've got your incisional biopsy, which requires the use of a, hard, a sharp blade. And it is your most, um, I would guess your, your most, how can I say it? Hmm. I'm, I'm thinking severe in my head. I guess it's because we're down to the wire, but no, it is the highest. It's the most complex. All right. So of the three, the most complex. So we also had some guidelines when coding multiple procedures and how to sequence them and then how to use your add-on codes and so forth. So I just wanna quickly point out this. When you are coding for multiple biopsies, you can only use one parent code of the highest um, biopsy, the most complex biopsy. So if you have a tangential, you have a um, incisional and a punch biopsy, you can only code one, one um, primary, one primary biopsy code. And we're gonna take a look at it. And then for the others, you use the add-on codes. All right, so you're gonna code the most complex and then the, for the remaining two, you will use the add-on codes. So I wanna thank you so much for that catch, Praveen. Outstanding work. I'm very proud to say he's an AMCI student and forensic coder. All right, so we had some additional um, parenthetical guidelines. And here is our code series. 11102 is your tangential um, biopsy and that's your parent code. 11103 is your add-on code for additional lesions. 11104 is your punch biopsy parent code. 11105 is the add-on code. 11106 is your incisional biopsy. And 11107 is the add-on code. All right, so I'm gonna quickly go through this scenario because we did do this previously. A. 11102 times 2 and 11106. B, 11102, 11103, 11106. C, 11106, 11103 with a 59 modifier times 2. And D, 11106, 
11102 with a 59 modifier and 11103 with a 59 modifier. A 55-year-old retired female with a history of skin cancer arrives to her dermatologist's office for biopsies of three suspicious lesions. The physician performs three separate biopsies on each of the lesions. A tangential biopsy of a 2.3 centimeter chest lesion was carried out first, followed by an incisional biopsy of three centimeters lesion of the back, then a tangential biopsy of a two centimeter lesion of the neck was carried out. What procedure codes best described this encounter? All right, coders, you have a minute and a half. Okay, Mrs. J, that was a minute and a half. Thank you. I'm sitting back here looking, reading the um, solution and I might have a little bit off. I might be a little off a little bit, so please bear with me. Thank you so much, Ms. Mrs. Tracy. All right, here are the key words. 55 year old, history of skin cancer, biopsies of three suspicious lesions, three separate biopsies, tangential biopsy, two centimeter chest, incisional biopsy, three centimeter of the back, and tangential biopsy, two centimeters of the neck were all carried out. All right, so when you have biopsies of different locations or three separate biopsies, you need to really just take an inventory of what you're doing. And that's what I did. I wrote down what's happening. We have, you know, one tangential of the chest, three centimeters of the back, that's an incisional, and another tangential, two centimeters of the neck. But the other thing that I need to pay attention to, which of the three is the most complex? Well, we know that incisional is the most complex. And if we go to our guideline, where it says multiple, it tells you when multiple biopsy techniques are performed during the same encounter, only one primary lesion biopsy code is reported. So 11102, 4, and 6 are all primary, so they cannot be coded together. So on site, we know we can eliminate A and B. And we also know that we can eliminate A and B because if we're coding for the most complex, we know, well, whenever we get to the codes, you'll see 11106 is incisional and C and D 
is coding for incisional first. They're sequencing the incisional biopsy first. So let's do, let's do what we do. Let's solve this scenario. All right, so we know the most complex is incisional. So if we go to 11106, this is the code for incisional biopsy of skin. Example, a wedge biopsy, including simple closure when performed, single lesion. So we are going to eliminate A and B because we're coding for our most complex first, and that is found at C and D. So what do we have left? Well, we've got a situation where C is coding 11103 and D is coding 11102. And D is wrong based on that last guideline that I just showed you where it says multiple. When you've got multiple biopsies, you can only code one primary lesion code, one primary biopsy code. 11102 is a primary code, so that's why D is incorrect, but let's look at this guideline right underneath 11103. It says report 11103 in conjunction with 11102, 4, and 6 when different biopsies are performed. So that's another indicator that D is incorrect because you are coding um, 111, you're coding D with two, two primary biopsy codes, and that is incorrect. So, don't forget 11102, this is your tangential biopsy, and the add-on code, you do not code that, that parent, you don't code that primary, because we've already coded the incisional, and that, you only can use one code as primary. So 11103 will be coded twice and C is our answer, D is incorrect. And if you got that correct, outstanding. All right, so I just wanna thank the King Praveen, the King of Forensic Coding for the day. I appreciate you. And if you all see anything that we need to address, go ahead and type it in the chat. See that area right here? right below here, type it in the chat. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Like right here and subscribe right here. And when you get when you subscribe, you'll get notified about class. So hey, that's a great thing. Like and subscribe. All right, so I just wanna leave you with a few more things. One of the resources that we use for this presentation is CPT. CPT also produces a, a manual called Principles of CPT. It is a phenomenal resource. So if you want additional coding resources, scenarios and things like that, I highly recommend it. And here they also give you some additional questions that might enhance your learning. So here is an exercise, and I want you to just kind of look at it. And if you are watching the playback, turn your head, turn your head. Just pause the screen and, and take the quiz. And then in five, four, three, two, one, I'll show you the answers. Turn your head if you don't want to see it. There you go if you want to screenshot it go right ahead. All right. Also, okay, I think I went in the other direction. Okay. All right. And here are some additional internet-based exercises. If you want to screenshot it, go right ahead. These are um, rel related to digestive system coding. So more, this is more um, based on anatomy. So definitely take advantage. And next week is week six, and we will be discussing urinary male and female. So if we're discussing urinary male and female, why did I put the nervous system up there? <laughs> okay, well, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So we will discuss the urinary male and female system. And you know what? We 
give we have a giveaway and the giveaway will take place next week we will announce the winner of a free AMCI lecture series yes you will have access to the AMCI entire lecture series you'll see all of our private lectures you'll see we have comprehensive instruction on many of the subjects that we've spoken about and if these lectures don't really give you everything that you need you feel you need more my advice is to register for the AMCI lecture series you will not regret it you will definitely um, think it's gold and yes the the most of the AMCI lectures are 2019 you have some that are not they don't have a date because they're not the dates don't expire like business of medicine and so forth all right so here is how you enter comment on this video below give us a comment let us know how we are doing how was today's presentation and then you need to sign up on the link provided it's in the chat and it's also in the description sign up there and you will be um announced and i believe if you registered last week you can register this week because and that will give you two chances yes so always always let us know what you're thinking in the chat praveen did and praveen not only did he you know help us out he became the king <laughs> so thank you so much and another thing we're thinking we're thinking about you and in about five or six weeks we'll be finished with this free course and we want to keep this thing going and if you want us to do it if you want us to keep it going tell us what would you like us to offer next is would you like an in in um an icd 10 cm a, a in-depth instruction on icd 10 cm pcs hick picks level two modifiers or whatever else just go ahead type it down in this the discussion and um, we'll see what we can do we love to hear from you and if you have questions just go ahead and contact our customer service i believe there's a link in the description right below and if you like just if just like type in go ahead and type in www.amcicoding.com and you'll click on customer service or contact and we will help you all right so i want to thank everyone for being so amazing i want to thank you guys were awesome in the chat and <laughs> tell me about it weren't those scenarios some of those scenarios a little tough they were a little challenging but remember if you got it right outstanding but if you learn something that really really is priceless Okay. All right. So, if you will, Miss Tracy and Ms. Rochelle, would you like to say so long? Yes, I would. I think everybody did a great job today. I think we had some really challenging scenarios that got us thinking. And um, I just really want to thank everybody for coming out. We are halfway through now with this um, advanced course. And we've just had a really great following. I know some of you might be just out there and not answering in the chat, but we know you're there. And we want to say that we appreciate you coming in and uh, hanging out with us for these sessions. Yes. And I'd like to shout out the AMCI phenomenal instructional team for this yt course i'm gonna need your help ms mrs tracy sure we have miss anna we have miss sarah we have miss tiffany miss angela miss valentina i think i said miss sarah <laughs> um, um, miss yeah. mia miss jody Thank Ms. you all so much. Did we say Miss Angela? I remember Miss Anna. Miss yes. Angela? And we have okay. Miss Angela, yes. Yes, they're just phenomenal and they are just on top of it all the time. So couldn't do this without them and definitely wanna give you guys a major, major um shout out for just helping us out. It's helps more than you know. 
It sure does. And we appreciate you. And we appreciate you too, students. You come back week after week and we see you. And we just want to let you know that we really, really do appreciate you. All right, team. I think it's time for us to sign on out. Yes, yes. See you next time. Have a great, enjoy the rest of your week, everyone. Take care. Oh, Miss Rochelle says bye. So long. Take care now.